I am very much in the mood for water themed projects these days. So in this video, we will go through the process of creating this deep sea submarine in Blender and see its exploration of ancient architecture and whatever else lurks among them. All right, firstly, we will build out a submarine. I'm not aiming to build a specific submarine, but more to hit a submarine vibe, if that makes sense. Aesthetically, I'm going for something that could fit into a World War II setting. I just really like the look of older submarines. I will not be doing any proper topology for this submarine. It's more a case of moving pieces around and intersecting them with each other. If you want to build something like a propeller, a neat trick is to use some radial symmetry. Just create a cone and a plane with the origin in the same position as the cone. This can be done by setting the 3D cursor to the world origin using the Shift S menu and then go to object and set the origin of the plane to the 3D cursor. Boom. Then on the plane we can add an array modifier. Turn off relative offset and turn on object offset instead and select the cone as the target. And just make sure the rotation of the plane is applied. We can do this by pressing Ctrl A, apply scale and rotation. And now when you rotate the cone, the blades rotate around with it. Amazing. And then we can modify the blades a bit more to make them a bit more like propellers. I also wanted to create some railing along the top of my submarine. For this, you can create some simple planes with subdivisions all around it. And then you can just add a simple wireframe modifier to that one. And now the edges become meshes magic and you can always add a bevel modifier to round them out a little bit i also made a simple anchor and used the add-on bool tool to give some simple detail using booleans now the model is more or less done and ready for texturing for texturing i have gathered a big assortment of images that i can use to texture my submarine if you can't get high res flat images of texture that usually works best what we can do then is to go to the uv editing and hit u cube project on our model then we can create a new material and add one of our images to the base color. The methods we will be using here are very similar to my other tutorial on making mechs in Blender. So check that one out if you haven't. Jumping back to the UV editing, we can now rearrange the UV islands to get completely different looks. Amazing. And this method is super fast and gives great results at a distance. And we can also create a roughness map and a bump to give everything some extra detail. Neat. And if you're feeling really fancy, then you can use a gradient texture with a geometry node and some fancy mapping to create a red bottom. Looks great. And once you're done with the texturing, you can always add some detail based on the textures using the knife tool and just extruding here and there. Boom. With the submarine completed, it was time to give it a little environment. So I created some rough terrain by sculpting a plane and created some simple ancient architecture to put on it. Texturing the architecture is pretty simple with some nice textures from texturehaven.com. A nice tip to get some extra variation is to overlay a natural grass-like texture on top of the architecture, mixing the brick with the green using a ramped noise. And I also added a nice cliff texture for the ground. All right, now it's time to create the deep sea itself. Lots of things can be done here. We will open the shader editor and switch over to the world option. Create a principal volume node and a volume absorption node and mix them together. Now everything is pretty dark, but if we create a spotlight and attach it to our submarine, we get a really nice effect. And if we start adjusting the colors of our water, we get a feel that the submarine is truly in the deepest parts of the ocean. Shining our spots on the architecture also gives off a super cool effect. You can also try adding some noise to the density of the principal volume to get some particles floating around. Overall, a lot of tweaking was required to get the look of the deep sea right, so just play around with it. At this point, I really wanted to create some air bubbles in the scene, so I created a simple ball with a glass-like shader. Then I added a new plane with a particle system, turned off gravity under the field weights, and adjusted the particle settings. You can create a really nice flow through the combination of turbulence and other force fields. Then I set the rendered method to object and selected my glass bubble. Now I could let the animation play and start seeing my bubbles fly around in the scene. Nice. And then I brought in an old friend, the sea monster from my tutorial on sea monsters in Blender. Check it out if you haven't. I know I also used it in the last tutorial on making ice landscapes, but I think it's nice that you can make an asset and reuse it in such different contexts. And it was a lot of fun trying to place the monster among the ruins. As a final touch, I added some fish from my tutorial on underwater scenes in Blender and exchanged it with the fish I created in the sea monster in Blender tutorial. With that, the scene was pretty much complete and I rendered everything out to Photoshop where I gave it some final touches and ended up with this. Sometimes what you make doesn't always end where you want it to. And I think there were stages where I liked it a bit more than the final, but it still was super fun and I learned a ton myself. 
Also, if you wish to see the full unedited process of this piece, then you can check it out over on Gumroad, along with some of our other courses. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.